Welcome to QA and uh, testing session this afternoon. I am Suchitra Vemuri and I work for ONF and I'm leading uh, the QA group at ONF. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, nice to see a packed hall here. Um, uh, myself, I'm Kartik and I represent Siena and I have worked a bit in the court tester framework. So in this session, we are mostly going to cover what we have in, in COD and uh, what we are at ONF, what we are testing and what we have currently and what is that we are looking forward uh, as part of the roadmap. So let's go over the slides. So a quick walkthrough on the agenda. Uh, we'll just introduce to the automation framework that we have currently and a quick walkthrough on the overview of the framework. Next, we'll go through the test, uh, test suites, what we have currently and what we have built and uh, how do we run this test? We use the QA Jenkins environment and how we are using it at ONF. And, uh, and then we'll go with a quick example. We'll show how to run a test, simple test using the automation framework that we have. And, and lastly, we'll talk about the current collaborations that we have uh, with uh, working with QA at ONF and what were their contributions. And, uh, and, the, and then the last but not least, we'll talk about the contribution opportunities that we have in QA. So just to introduce, now I assume that everybody in this room knows about COD and how complex the COD is and uh, why do we need a framework. So COD is uh, made up of many components and these components, uh, some of them such as like, we need to have a framework to, uh, to access the components of COD and then we should be able to test the various components of COD. Some of them are like OpenStack, we need to be able to work with XOS, MASS, ONOS apps, we need to work with the VMs and containers. And uh, the another important thing for an automation framework for COD should be that we should be able to do some traffic generation in order to validate the data plane connectivity. So keeping all these in mind, the, we have the automation framework for at, uh, that we have developed, uh, which, is the, which we call it as COD Tester. And COD Tester framework initiative was done by company Siena and, uh, and ONF actually started testing COD only since like a couple months, maybe I should say like eight to nine months. And ever since that, we started using COD Tester and enhanced it further to add more functionalities into COD Tester. And it's still evolving as we uh, continue to work on testing uh, M-COD, R-COD and E-COD solutions. So, a quick overview of the list of features that we have for COD Tester. COD Tester consists of collection of various test tools. As we explained before, we have various components to be accessed. So in order to access and test all these components, we need to have a rich set of test tools into the framework. And uh, the COD Tester framework itself deploys in containers. And uh, in, each, in, in these containers, we are uh, simulating, I mean, we create these interfaces which that simulate the end subscribers. So, so we actually, uh, just sorry to interrupt. So we actually simulate the customer through the container. So, the, so we'll go through the setup slides and we'll show you how it's architected. So the tests are actually run from the container, so which will actually simulate the subscriber. So you can send the subscriber side traffic through these, uh, through the container. So it's isolated and doesn't run on the host. Yes, and uh, we can, uh, right now, COD Tester has the ability to test on pods, even virtual environments and COD in a box system. So you can deploy it pretty much on all the systems and then uh, try to run your test cases. And currently with COD Tester, we are, with the framework that we have in place, we have several favorables of tests can be achieved. And some of them are that the functional, container-based, sanity tests, API related tests. Uh, we have data plane accessibility tests. We have, we are still improving on the performance and scale and not but, and lastly, we need to create some end-to-end -end, uh, tests for validating the complete COD system. So all these things are possible with a uh, COD tester. And right now, the COD tester framework, well, it, it's still being evolved. So it's mostly R-COD functionality 
is being achieved and uh, most of the contributions were made by Sienna. And so, this picture uh, talks about a very high level overview of what components that we have for the automation framework. So the, the test uh, mechanism, it starts off, it has two phases. So it has the setup phase where you actually set up the test container, you set up the layout and uh, actually, so let's say you want to set up, uh, you want to test uh, COD, right? So you, we have for each of these setups, we have a manifest file which represents the setup. So if you want to start, uh, instantiate the COD tester for the COD setup to test the COD end-to-end -end traffic, then you basically bring it up with the manifest COD. So we have an example manifest COD which you can actually modify. Then if you want to say let's, it can also test Volta. So if you want to test Volta with the PONSIM simulator, you can bring it up with the PONSIM manifest file. So it'll actually bring it up and set up the container accordingly with all the interfaces hooked to the host site. So that's the setup phase. And, and then after that, you have the run phase where you can actually run, actually execute the test from the container. So for each of these tests that we have, you have configuration files as you would expect for every test. And they are all just simple JSON files. So when you, if you want to write a test case, you just describe your test configuration in a JSON file and the test loader will automatically load those JSON and set them as class attributes for your test case. So you could write a test case and then bring it up with the default attributes and the test loader would auto automatically override those class attributes and you could actually use those attributes in the test case. So that's the test mechanism, which is the configuration uh, file. Then, uh, then in the second case, in, in the run case, when it actually executes the test case, it can actually run a prologue and then an epilogue. So in the prologue, the first thing that you would do is you would set up, you would start the log logger. So you can just collect a snapshot of logs before you run the test case. So you say, so in this case, we basically collect the controller logs, which is the ONOS logs. So you, when before the test starts, you make a snapshot of an ONOS log. Then you run the test case, then you basically, after the test finishes, then you collect second snapshot of one, or then do a diff, and then actually dump the error logs automatically. So that's done by the framework, which is part of the runtime, which has the logging and all the utilities for that. And then each of those tests, you have different modules for uh, testing, and most of them are functional, like vRouter will test the ONOS uh, vRouter app through a Quagga and try to see how it scales with uh, multiple routes being injected from the forwarding plane. Then the, you have the VSG, which will actually test the subscriber site, so it will start creating uh, uh, the subscribers through the XOS interface and see if end-to-end -end traffic can be passed. That, that test is there. Then we have the, the fabric test is not yet mature. It only does end-to-end, -end, and in the quad deployment case, it, it was actually being used to see if the cord is deployed correctly by seeing if all the compute node and the head node accesses are, are working, are, being, are pinging. And then we have ONOS apps test, which is, uh, which is pretty solid when it comes to DHCP and IGMP. So we have all the test cases that cover the IGMP snooping app, and the DHCP also covers the DHCP proxy in the Volta environment with the relay and a bunch of other ONOS apps, but uh, it doesn't have the segment routing part. The performance is still in its uh, inception phase, doesn't have much, except that we have some cases for IGMP which can do snooping and actually measure the channel zap time, but we haven't stretched it a bit. And uh, of course, the framework is such that you could easily add tests that could keep spinning VSGs, but then we need to have some you know, groundwork to know what, what exactly is required and what what attributes are we looking for? So those things are not really mature. Volta test cases are there, which can actually do EAPOL, which can do radius request, and then do all the way from subscriber authentication to subscriber traffic phase. So EAPOL, then send a DHCP, see if the DHCP is getting acquired, then send traffic all the way. And the tools that are being used are the standard uh, usual suspects. So you have the, so the Robo framework is actually used by the ON lab to actually generate reports, which is a good reporting tool. So they run the subscriber side and all their quad API tests. We also have some robots for the functional tests that can be integrated through the CI tools like Jenkins. Then uh, the quad tester in, 
in internally uses the nose framework for executing the test which is pretty simple so we doesn't have much bells and whistles so you just use nose to run the test then then scappy is the way that you actually simulate subscriber side traffic so you can inject traffic using scappy like dhcp igmp you can construct all these packets and actually see how it behaves we use pipework because it's easier for you to actually configure the container the with all the interfaces that you need for the subscriber to simulate the subscriber side traffic and map that subscriber side interfaces in the container to the host side interface and then ansible for easy automation self explanatory then you can go to the next slide so and the tests uh, most of the tests are utilizing all these modules and then trying we, that's what, that's how we achieve tests and the tests are most of the tests are written in robot framework at nose at a high level so a quick look on the test environments uh, at onf we try to run tests based on the environment and we have several environments that we uh, use and uh, run test cases on and pods are the full pods where you have the physical um, uh, head node compute node fabric and everything like a cord builds a uh, uh, cord would need and we build uh, we run all the test suites mostly all of the test suites can be run on them and uh, we have specific tests to validate the pods and uh, uh, like configure them and we have post install verification that we do on the pods and most of the uh, night we build the pods nightly and then validate all these uh, things on pods and we also have cord in a box system and uh, let's say in case you do not have accessibility to any hardware then cord in a box uh, you can be deployed on a physical node or in on an, uh, or using an experiment that you spin up using uh, cloud labs and uh, it's pretty much uh, simulates most of the components that a pod has and you would be still be able to run many tests even on cord in a box system and uh, we do validate uh, many of the test cases even on cord in a box system if we do not have pods available and virtual lastly the virtual environment that we use um, this is like a development environment locally on a vm we build profiles of various profiles like r code m code e code and we build the profiles and then we validate a very quick uh, test on it and mostly we use this for like development environment and also we use for tests where we want to have a quick sanity check on the uh, check ins that are getting made on to the repos and we validate the tests and then before before it gets pushed into the um, the before the code gets merged onto the main branches we are validating it using the virtual machines and uh, going to the various categories of tests i had already explained before like what kind of tests we have so uh, i will be going through each of these tests and what we are doing on these uh, various flavors of tests that we have in the next slides so let's talk about testing pods what we have on like on testing pods so how we validate pods so every night we are building using jenkins on, on these pods and we have some config validation uh, procedures that we check we have scripts that we validate after the pod is installed and uh, we after the pod is installed we also do some sanity checks on the pods mainly to check how the pings are between the head node compute node and the fabric and also do some health checks in the onos apps and the log files and also some health checks on the containers uh, service uh, service based containers and uh, verify that there are no uh, errors or law i mean errors in the logs and we also verify the open stack containers and we verify the mass on it and we validate services on fabric basically we are trying to validate that after installation the pod is completely functional and there are no issues to proceed further and then after that we do have some control plane tests that we run on the pods and we still are yet to build the automated uh, data plane tests on pods which that is uh, going forward we do have them in the use case i think is that like if you are a customer who wants to deploy the pod then you can basically deploy the pod and run the cord tester suite which automate which is also part of the of the cord repo and then see if your pod is deployed correctly then do all those validation before you proceed 
that's one I use case. Yeah, and then one more thing I mentioned on testing on validation in SPOD is that we do have contributions from uh, collaborators like uh, Spire and Flex Day and uh, IXIA. They do help us by emulating the traffic on the real pods and we validate the functionality of the pods too. And all these uh, tests that I'm talking about are all automated in court testing and then available to be used. Uh, and then control plane test, what we, what we are doing in control plane test is we are validating the XOS uh, control plane operations. And we validate these control plane on both parts, CIAB and also on the virtual environments. And uh, most of the tests are that we have written for control plane are using robot framework and the backend framework is written in Python. And most of the tests of control plane that we have currently are for R code and we are yet to develop for M code and E code. And data, going to data plane tests. So we are validating data plane operations on CIAB currently. And uh, these tests are run from NOS framework and Python. And most of the data plane operations and the framework was written by Sienna. And we are using them to run on CIAB. And currently, all the tests, whatever we have available, are in R pod flavor. We do have container-based tests. Uh, these are these tests we use for sanity checks on the virtual environments uh, to make sure that after deploying a specific profile, whether it could be E code, R code, or M code, we are validating the container states and then making sure that the process of that service is running in the containers and also validating that there are no errors in the containers. And they are yet to be uh, improved further and uh, we have several tests for API-based tests. Most of the API-based tests are in uh, our REST API-based, which are from the XOS. And we also have automated uh, the gRPC APIs, which run on the virtual environments. And uh, these are mostly running uh, using the Jenkins jobs again and validating the commits. And going to the QA Jenkins environment, this we do have a standard procedure like everybody has, how we do, we are running the test based on Jenkins and how we use Jenkins. So this picture here shows that how we are, what is the cycle that we are following using the Jenkins procedure, Jenkins, uh, sorry, Jenkins. And we are building and we are deploying and we are testing and then reporting any bugs. And if there are any bugs, there are more patches and again, more patches, again, we are building it, so the cycle continues. This is at a broader picture of how we are using Jenkins environment. Currently, QA environment. Earlier, I mentioned in the first few slides, um, I have explained about the various test environments that we are using to validate uh, uh, the test cases. So we are uh, using the Gerrit repos, Jenkins is building, and then we have these test environments here. So on the left side here, we are validating the virtual profiles. Uh, this is the virtual environment that we talked about. And uh, the middle one is the coordinate box. And, and then the, the last one is talking about pods. So what we have currently in um, ONF is we are building all the pods and then we are validating all of them. And here in this picture, it also shows that how we are using COD tester automation framework and how we are validating. Uh, if, because, and then it shows that core tester could be used and deployed on any kind of test environment and can be launched and then be able to test each environment after the build happens using Jenkins. And um, so to check, there are lots of jobs that we have at ONF and then if uh, you guys are interested to look at what kind of types of jobs that we have in specific and what are the tests that we are running. This is the link over here, uh, jenkinsopencode.org. And then if you go to the QA view, uh, there are many jobs and then you're free to go and inspect them and then uh, check what, what we are running. And this slide is just explaining the summary of what we are running based on ports, VMs, and coordinate box system. Okay, so 
Now let's go through a very simple example and uh, we are trying to demonstrate here the use of core tester automation framework, how we are validating and how we are testing. Let's take a very simple example. Uh, the example over here talks about creating a subscriber using XOS. Uh, and then you create the subscriber with a specific S tag and C tag. And then after creating the S tag and C tag, validate the data plane connectivity of it. So how we are doing it, it we have a pic picture representation here. So this is my example scenario. So what we are trying to do here is, this is the core tester framework. And when, when it gets deployed, we have the test container where the test container creates various interfaces. So and the, yeah, sorry, Dan. So this example is basically trying to create a subscriber and just simulate a subscriber like in the real world. Right? So you have a device tag and then you have a subscriber tag and then the subscriber just comes up, it sends traffic, see if it's working. And that's end to end. So here in Code Tester, when she says that you have this device VCPE and the interfaces are all configured, it's all based on those configuration files. So there is a configuration file for access side, which is called OLT configuration, which you can actually configure in your container, which is actually going to be configured in the container for subscriber side traffic. So for this specific test, you have a container which is going to have a service tag of 415 and then a customer tag of 222 which is automatically going to be provisioned in the sub in the container. So then you could actually see if, if you could get IP and then see if you could pass traffic. So in this example, uh, this S tag and C tag, we are passing through the control plane test case, test case, and which is accessing the XOS component there. And once the XOS uh, creates the subscriber, it attaches a Vault tenant to it, and then one, and then the OpenStack creates the necessary VSG and the VCPE container in this. And the valid and the orchestration is done by the XOS, uh, as you all know. And once in the compute node, thus that is created, as uh, Karthik explained, we are trying to make sure that using the core tester automation uh, framework, we are trying to simulate exactly the same S tag and C tag here, and then try to reach the internet using which that goes through the, the one that got created by the OpenStack. So because we were told that the internet is a bit flaky, the Wi-Fi is flaky, so we already have a demo which is already canned and there's a video which is embedded in the slide, so it will actually be running. So the, the, the three phases I've explained. So if you want to set up core tester from scratch, all you have to do is clone the source and just run prerequisites. And that would automatically pull all the, the container images because there are some pre-built images for all the containers in Docker Hub, so that will all be pulled, so it should be pretty quick. Then you set up the, uh, the core test environment with the manifest file. So there's already a bunch of manifest files which are already there in the source, in the source code repo. So for COD, in this specific example for CIAB, you can just set it up using the manifest COD JSON, assuming the ONOS attributes, IPs are all the same. And then after that, you run the test to create the subscriber and then run the test to see if the end-to-end -end works, so the whole flow works. So that's what we're going to show in the demo. So these are the, we just put the commands for a quick reference. And that's the, uh, the, the, the first phase is just doing a setup. What it's doing is it's, it's uh, the reason the, so this setup is uh, running with the manifest for cord. It stops the existing instance of ONOS and tries to wrap uh, the, the instance, the running configuration with the environment for cord tester because there is like it, the cord tester expects ONOS configuration. So it actually mounts the container with the ONOS shared configuration installs the core tester specific apps, and then spins up the, the test container. And, and then while you were looking at me, I think it's, the demo has already rolled, it's created the subscriber, and this is the XOS UI. So what it's now doing is running a VST test for external connectivity, where it's going to test if you have external access through that VCP instance. 
So as you see, the ping is rolling now. You don't even have access from the test container. But once the test runs, it will, it should start pinging. That side. That's when you really know that shit is working. So it starts now. So now the test is going to run. Now it's trying to send an ICMP, and you see this guy is rolling now. And you see the ping is coming in. That's because. Right. When it starts the test, it tries to get DHCP through that VCP interface. And what that internally results is it actually goes through the whole fabric into the compute node running the VCP, uh, DNS masquerade, DHCP server, gets a DHCP IP, sets a default route to go through that guy, and then you start pinging Google uh, the name server and, and see if it works. And that's when you see that it works. If it doesn't work, that means you're you have a problem with the end-to-end -end connectivity or the core deployment is not right. Does that make sense? OK, so the, the t now the test has finished, and again, it's unreachable now. OK, moving forward. So going to the community collaborations, uh, the next few slides talks about the community collaborations that we have in QA. And uh, a big thanks to all the collaborators who had contributed to QA. And I, I think without uh, the community cooperation and collaboration, uh, we would not be able to test quad properly. And then we, so some of the contributions are listed here at a very high level, and there is much more to it, actually. And uh, let's talk about CNS and the framework uh, initiation of quad tester was done by Sienna, and most of the framework for the data plane and uh, the Volta is completely written by Sienna. And we have Radices also, they had contributed some tests for the pods. And we have Spiral Group, which they provide uh, pods for test, and also they help us in the uh, functional scenarios of R chord and M chord. And we have also working in the QA group, we have Intel, IXIA, and Netronome who are working on the performance of Intel EPC. And uh, we have Flex as well, uh, who provide ports for test. And uh, they are also helping us with running some functional scenarios for our court. And we do have it, by the way, we do have a demo um, at the science fair where we show the collaboration of ONF, Spirant, and Flex. So uh, whenever you get a chance, please drop by at the science, science fair desk. And, and lastly, very important, QCT also gives us many ports for deployment and tests. And uh, uh, we, we are like heavily using QCT servers to build nightly, and then many tests are also run on them. So these are all the, con and there are much more contributions into development area. I'm just covering for the QA. And uh, these are at very high level. And definitely, there is more to it. And going forward, uh, since we are now into testing E chord, M chord, and R chord, there is much work that is on the roadmap. And, uh, Anybody willing to participate uh, or interested to collaborate, please feel free to, to come up and then uh, ask us more questions from the QA side. And then definitely please do drop by at the Q ONF QA kiosk desk where we had placed, this, uh, placed a booth here to talk about the more opportunities, QA opportunities in these specific areas. And uh, this is a very high level, but the list is larger, actually. So please uh, do drop by. And then if you have any general questions or anything else that you, like, you guys like to contribute, please let us know. And also, we do also have uh, weekly, uh, sorry, bi-weekly meetings that happen for the, like the core TST meetings. We also have uh, QA test meetings that happen bi-weekly, and that happens on Thursday 10 to 11 PST, and that's on the court calendar. So uh, please feel free to uh, drop, drop in and join the calls, and then provide us more suggestions and any contribution or any uh, feedback that you have. Uh, feel free to help us with anything. 
If you have any questions, just ask now or you can, you can discuss over coffee. How many test cases do you have to find? How many test cases? How many test cases we have and how long it takes to run them? Uh, it depends on the environment, test environment that we are running. And uh, there is no, uh, we don't have a metrics of how many test cases we have, uh, but there are quite few in each of the areas that we talked earlier. Uh, and um, let's say for building virtual pods, uh, virtual environments and running sanity tests, it, uh, it just takes like uh, 15 minutes. And for pod, it takes more than that. And um, yeah, so we are still building. There are not many tests, so it, it's very fast. Uh, sorry? I mean, have you applied this framework to any of the trials that some of the operators have done? Sorry? I mean, have you applied this framework to any of the trials that's been done by some of the operators? Okay, have we applied this framework in testing the field trials yeah. in, or any operators? Uh, I think Sienna. Can. I can take that. So recently, Sienna had a, a not a trial, but a POC with AT&T. So, I mean, we couldn't use Cod Tester there, though we could have ideally because I was directly involved there because I'm working on Volta now. So what AT&T was already having an RG over there, which was simulating an RG, and they were using, I think, uh, Spirant or, or Exia, which was already doing most of the. It basically was doing authentication, trying to get DHCP, and so we couldn't really use it, though we could have technically. So what the RG was doing, we could have done that using the core tester. Yeah, I guess where I'm going from is most operators would have some form of testing framework today, um, either for the legacy service or for the NFE platform that they already have, right? So uh, I'm trying to find where, you know, how an operator can actually use this. So this specific example was at and was not really using a core. It was just Volta and okay, yeah. so, I'm not sure if in the real record you're saying that we could still do that with the RG that they're doing. They have a hardware simulator and try to send subscriber traffic or something like that. Yeah, so we, we have plans for few trials, but it's specifically around M4. So I guess from the point of view, get a more understanding of what's the roadmap for that and how we may be using this. Yeah, this <laughs> one way is you could use this to create subscriber, right? So this could also create subscribers for you using the XOS interface. Right now, it only can do XOS, I think. So if you have some other uh, NMS, you need a, you need to write your client to create the subscriber. You could automate that flow and then actually try to use the external, uh, try to see if traffic is going. So you don't have to create the subscribers and you could keep scaling. So you could see how it performs by actually dynamically provisioning subscribers with various tags and see how it performs. Certification? Certification brigade? Yeah. Oh, I'm not aware about it. Yeah, so I can take so up that question. I'm just going to ask about how to co cooperate the certification brigade to QA test. Is it left left working? Yeah, so your question is uh, from the certification brigade, how we can help QA, right? Yes, uh, we talked about it uh, in the team at ONF regarding the certification brigade, and definitely we are uh, looking forward to talk to the group and then present like the situation, like where we are right now and what are the opportunities that people from the community, not, not just the certificate brigade, but even from the community. And uh, definitely we can present that items to you and uh, you from the, even the certification brigade, people can pick those items and work on them. Thank you for your Thank time. You.